Hi guys, welcome to Harvest Valley Church's online service. I'm Shelby and this is my sister April. We've got a lot of stuff planned for you today. If you have kids, be sure to check out our YouTube channel for our latest Kids Church video. You can find the link also on our website under the Kids tab and you'll also find some fun resources for you the parents. If you would like to give from your home, it's simple. You can go to our website at harvestvalley.org, scroll down the home page, Click on the Get Involved tab and select Give. Another way you can do it is by mailing in a check, dropping off a cash or check donation at our offices, or you can use our Church Center app under Giving. Have you tried out our church food pantry yet? This is a great resource to give to those in need. We will be accepting non-perishable food and household items for those in need. If you or someone you know has a need, go ahead and call our church office to see if we have a specific item in stock. We can then coordinate if you want to come pick up from our office or if you need your items dropped off at your home. This is a great resource, our food pantry. Come use it. We've got a great service planned for you today, including spirit-filled worship with Pastor Eric and an awesome sermon from Pastor Derek. But before we get started, if you have someone in mind who you know would love to watch this with you, uh, go ahead and send this link to them. Call them up and have them watch. All right, guys, let's get started.
All right, well, good morning, church. Um, it's day 77 uh, without a haircut. I'm a little concerned, not just not because it's unmanageable. I'm a little concerned that my hair's not growing fast enough. I thought it was going to grow more. I'm a little scared. I thought by this time, some of my hair would cover some of my bald spots, but I still got them. Um, I also had some people... Uh, uh, email in about some of the suggestions of what I should do with my hair during this time and uh, three suggestions number one someone said have a man bun can't do it don't have enough hair number two was have um, uh, part my hair down the middle and it just uh, I, I tried it and too much baldness and thirdly someone said do a bowl cut not going to do that so <laughs> Anyways, this is what I got, and we're going to keep on going and see how it works out. Uh, this morning, we're going to have a great word, and then it's going to followed up, be followed up with communion. So what I'm going to ask you to do right now, if you haven't already, is go to the kitchen, pause this, go to the kitchen, get some crackers and some juice or wine, get ready for communion, come back, and then uh, start the video, and, and later at the very end of service, we're going to have communion together. So right now, what I want us to do is let's go ahead and pray before we get into the word and just bow your heads and hearts with me. Lord, we come right now. We pray for our country. We pray for our cities. We ask God for your provision to flow. We ask God for your healing virtue to flow through our city streets. Lord, we pray right now that during this time that you would give our leaders wisdom, on how to manage uh, uh, getting us to a place where we can get back to work and, and start this thing again. We praise you for this. We believe that you are the God that oversees everything. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. All right, let's get into the word. Turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter eight. Luke chapter eight. We're going to look at verses 49 to 55. This is one of my favorite Bible stories, um, and, and, and it's great. So let's, let's, let's begin with verse 49. It says, When he was still speaking, that's Jesus, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, or saying to the, to the uh, synagogue leader, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But when Jesus heard this, he answered him saying, do not be afraid. Only believe and she will be made well. When he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the girl. So all wept and mourned for her, but he said, Do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. Verse 53. And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them outside, took her by the hand, and called saying, little girl, arise. Then her spirit returned, and she arose immediately, and he commanded her that she would be given something to eat. About 12 years ago, uh, I was snorkeling with my family in Hawaii, and uh, we were having a fun time, and all of a sudden, a riptide came in, and before we noticed, our boys and we were being dragged down to the coral at the bottom of the ocean. And so Kyra and I quickly jumped into action and we grabbed our two sons and fought our way back up to the surface and then the shore. It was interesting to me how quick it happened, that it was just a violent thrust down and um, without warning. You know, there are times in our life when we can get caught up in what I like to call the riptide of life, where out of the blue, it's either us or someone we love gets attacked by the devil. And before we notice it, notice it, they're being dragged down, down, down into a place that's not good for them or for us, a place of doubt a place of physical harm, a place of depression, a place of addiction, of a, a place of, of, of bitterness and anger. And if not careful, if we don't do something quick, they're going to be dragged further and further away from the place 
that God wants them to be. It's fair to say in this story that Jairus was caught up in a riptide of life. He was doing fine and then his daughter gets attacked by this crazy illness that causes her to almost be at the, uh, at the front of death. And, and so here he is, and immediately he's being dragged down by fear and worry, and this illness is dragging her down. And it's at this point, I love this part, where he makes a crucial and timely decision to do whatever it took to get his daughter back to where she needed to be. And that was he sought the help of Jesus. Now seeking the help of Jesus for Jairus, it didn't make sense because the Bible tells us that he was a ruler of a synagogue. His job was actually to forbid people from following Jesus. And here he is running to Jesus in the midst of a crowd and pushing his way through the crowd to get to Jesus and find him when he's there, he, he, he bows and, and begs Jesus to help him. You know, it's easy to ignore Jairus and his, his, his actions and just focus primarily on Jesus and how he healed the young girl. But there would be no Jesus in the story if it wasn't for Jairus reaching out to Jesus. It's, it's, my message today goes beyond the fact that you might have a faith or belief that Jesus can deliver, heal, set free. See, our faith has to go into action to the place where we then call on the name of Jesus and ask, them, ask him to help. Like the Bible tells us, Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask, say ask, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and to he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. Are you feeling like Jairus today? Have you been attacked? Has someone that you loved been attacked, whether it's emotionally, physically, or spiritually. And because of it, do you see how quick it's dragging them down, down, down to a place where you never thought possible? It's that place, what I'm talking about, where it may be a life-threatening illness or depression or a phobia or a broken marriage, or an addiction, or a sin, or a place where they're starting to doubt God. Church, listen to me closely. It's time, say time. It's time to fight back against the riptide of life. So what the Lord showed me is that he gave me three keys on how to address this, how to uh, fight back when we're being attacked by the devil and it's taken us down or someone that we love down. And it coincides with the story of how Jairus fought for his daughter's life. So are you ready for this? The three keys. All right, here we go. The first key is this. The most important, number one, quickly, say quickly. Quickly ask Jesus to help you. Quickly ask Jesus to help you. The Lord uh, is, is so clear with this, this directive. Imagine the pride Jairus had to swallow to go after Jesus. Remember, like I said, he was a, his reputation was to be against Jesus. His reputation and his belief was that God doesn't give mercy. He only gives to those that are perfected by the law. But, but here we see he just abandons that belief because he realizes this is not going to help him save his daughter. He doesn't have time to pay penance. He doesn't have time to sacrifice bulls and lambs to get to a place where he feels good enough. No, he needs God's mercy now. Church, it is a waste of time when we are attacked to blame ourselves and others. Even if we are part of the problem, that's not the first thing first. We can't fix it 
by our self-loathing, by our criticism of what someone else should have done. Rather, we must throw ourselves, listen to me, at the mercy seat of Jesus Christ and ask for his help. Say help. I, I love this in Isaiah 55, 1 through 3. Listen to these words. Ho, every one who thirst, come to the water. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. I love this. Basically, it's saying stop doing things that are not working. The devil doesn't care about how good you are. He doesn't care about whose fault it is. The only thing the devil fears and the only thing that will force him to stop dragging you or someone else down, down, down is when you invoke Jesus to come onto the scene. It's only when Jesus gets to the scene that the devil stops. Do you know when an adult or a child are being dragged down into a water uh, doctors say that we don't have a lot of time. In fact, uh, adults only have about two minutes of, of breath in them and a child about less than a, a minute. So our actions have to be quick. And when I saw my boys being dragged down by the riptide and I went to go get John, I noticed as I went to go get him, I saw his mask leave his face. It, it fell off of his face and was going further down into the coral. How ridiculous would it be if I didn't grab John, but I went after his mask first, got his mask, and then got John? It would have been terrible. I grabbed a hold of John first. I didn't care about the mask. Do you know, after it was all said and done, we went back to where we had rented the equipment, and you know what? We had to pay $50 for that mask. I never went back to get it. You know why? I didn't care about the mask. I only cared about my sons. In the same way, how often do we waste precious time when we're being attacked by the devil that is dragging us down or dragging someone else down that we love? And if not careful, listen to me, if we keep letting that happen, we're going to lose spiritual consciousness. And then we'll forget who we are in God. This is why it's so crucial that when we get attacked to do first things first. And what is that? To humble ourselves and to call on the name of Jesus and say, I need your help. I can't do this on my own. I need you to intervene. I need your wisdom. I need your direction. I need your healing I need you to set me free. I need you to restore my relationship. These are the words that are powerful. See, when Jairus, when his daughter was dying, he cared less about his reputation. He gave it up. In fact, he probably lost his job because I imagine his supervisors found out that he ran to Jesus and that was, that was a no-no. My question to you is, what are you willing to give up today to run to Jesus? Your reputation, your money, your offense, your self-loathing, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is crying out to Jesus. Jesus, I need you to save me. The second key to overcoming the attack of the devil is let Jesus guide you through it. Let Jesus guide you through it. Look what happened right after Jairus petitioned Jesus. It says in Luke 8, 49, while he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the teacher. So friends had arrived where Jairus was and basically said, listen, Jairus, it's too late. We just found out your daughter's dead. It, 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 this doesn't matter anymore. But I, I want you to see what Jairus did. He didn't just leave in shame and in sorrow, walk away from Jesus. He didn't care what his friends said. He focused on Jesus. 
And he allowed Jesus to guide him through this attack. And notice what Jesus instructs him to do. First of all, he says basically, hey, listen, don't listen to what those people are saying. I want you to focus on me. Your daughter's going to be fine. Just believe in me. The second thing he does is he asks Jairus to lead him to his house. I want to go with you. Show me where your house is. And then the third thing he instructs Jairus to do is he lets him, uh, he asks if he could come into his house and pray for his daughter. And Jairus, I love this, he, he consents to all of it. He lets him, Jesus do what he wants to do. Do you realize God's help for you may come with directives? Things he's asking you to do. His help to heal your marriage may come with the directive, I need you to go and get some counseling. His help to heal your mind may come with the directive, I don't, need, I don't want you listening to this stuff anymore. I don't want you watching this stuff anymore. I don't want you listening to that negative speech anymore. His help to deliver you from your addiction may come at the, at the directive of, hey, put a filter on that device. Don't, 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 don't hang out with those people anymore. Don't watch that or listen to that anymore. It may be a directive, get, a, get accountability, go to celebrate recovery. His help to deliver you from bitterness and anger may come with the directive of, listen, you need to forgive that person. Before I could heal you of this, you need to forgive that person. Maybe his directive to uh, uh, help your loved one may come at the price or the directive of, I need you to wake up in the morning and pray. I need you to fast for this, this, this person that you, you love. His help to rescue your loved one may come at, with a directive, hey, I, I need you to share the gospel with them or just share whatever I'm putting in your, your, your heart for them. You know, 20 years ago, I met a man in Mexico who was crippled, a young man. And, and, and his parents let me minister to him and the Holy Spirit spoke so clearly to me when I was in his room while he was laying on his bed and he said Derek I want you to get up this young man I want you to put his feet on the ground and I want you to f help him get up stand up and then I I want you to walk with him across his room and so I I shared this with the parents and they they translated it to this young man, and he agreed with every step. And so he, he, we together, myself and him, I, 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 I wrapped my arms around him and helped him, and, and we literally walked across his room. He had been crippled for seven years, and I watched, and his parents watched, as he put pressure on, uh, on the ground with his feet and he moved his feet. It was, it was a miracle. And then the Lord, after that, after that, he did it a couple times and then I said, go ahead and rest. And then the Holy Spirit told me, now tell the parents to do the same thing over and over again every single day. And so they, and, and believe it or not, they did that every single day. Guess what? I went back to that young man's house two years later, and guess who greeted me at the door? That young man. He was walking perfectly fine. I love this because it just tells us that sometimes when God gives us a promise or a help, it comes with a directive. And that directive is to help us. The third key to overcoming the attack of the devil on your life or on someone you love is to kick out the professional mourners. The professional mourners. Back to the story when, when, when Jairus and Jesus came back to Jairus' house, they noticed that there were mourners that had positioned themselves around the house and in the house. 
and weeping and wailing and crying out. And, and, and what had happened was, <clears throat> this was a custom, a Jewish custom, So because when someone died, uh, the family would pay for these mourners in the city to come out and to weep in the uh, well to, to signify that someone had died, to kind of create a somber moment. So when Jesus saw this, <clears throat> this is what he said. He said to the mourners, do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. And when the mourners heard this, they started laughing and ridiculing him, mocking him. But I, I love what Jesus did. He transitioned from that. He did not give in to their mockery. Rather, he removed them from the house. Now, how did he remove them? I don't think he kindly asked them. I think he, kind, he, he, he removed them kind of like he removed those uh, from, from uh, the temple. So how, how did Jesus remove these people? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't that kind. In fact, I'm sure it was much like how he removed those that were in the temple that day. Have you ever been kicked out of a house? <laughs> Maybe yours or someone else's house? I remember when I was a kid, I brought over some buddies, uh, neighborhood buddies, and we were in the backyard playing, and we had this great idea to, to, to fight the guys on the other side of the fence. We had some friends on the other side of the fence, and we had this idea of let's have a mud fight. We both had dirt on both sides, and we just watered it down and made some big old mud, mud, mud clods. And we just went at it for like an hour. We were slinging mud. It was so fun. And we were just going at it. And about an hour into it, my mom comes out of the house and she is livid. And I, rem I can, uh, I'll still remember her face, that, that scowl that she had. And I remember what she did. She, she told us, get over here. And she looked at my two friends and she said, get out now. I need to talk to Derek alone. I knew what that meant. And I'll tell you what, my friends knew what that meant too. They didn't, they didn't question it. They left right away. Back to the story. Jesus didn't have a problem kicking out these mourners. And they knew it. Why did Jesus kick them out? Because he wanted only those that respected him and believed that he had the power to do the impossible. Once that distraction was removed, Jesus was able to go into the house and he grabbed a hold of that young lady's hand and he said, arise. And that young lady came back to life. And God did this amazing miracle. A key to your victory, church, listen to me closely, is that when you are being attacked, you have to kick out the professional mourners in your life. Who are those people? They are the voice of the ones that criticize and mock the presence and the power of Jesus Christ. When you are being attacked or a loved one is being attacked, the worst thing you can do is consult godless and faithless people on the matter. For when they don't respect the power of God, guess what? The only other solution is to do it on your own, to do it in the flesh. So their solution is usually when attack comes, just give in, give up, stop fighting the temptation, just, just assimilate into it. They tell you, uh, to fear more. They tell you to be more bitter and to be more angry. They tell you to throw money at it or to self-medicate more. See, when we are being attacked, we need to do what Jairus did and we need to kick out the criticism out of our life that focuses on what God can't do and we need to find the friends and the faith that says God can do all things. I want to close this morning with asking you a question. Is, are you or someone you love being attacked right now? Has that riptide of life started to drag them down 
down, down in a place that you know is not God's will. Church, listen to me closely. It's time to fight. Say fight. It's time to fight. Not later, but now. Why there is still consciousness. Why they still have a fighting chance. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what? Mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. The greatest weapon we have is when we invoke and call the name of Jesus Christ to help. Tell him what's going on. Ask him for help. It's a waste of time to cast blame. That, that, that's just a waste of time. Rather, call on Jesus to save, and he will. In a moment, we're going to take communion together. And I, I can't think of a better time than communion to, to understand what Jesus Christ has afforded us and, and, and the weapons that are in the, uh, the, the elements, are represented in the elements of communion to fight against the onslaught of the enemy. But before we do that, I, I want to ask an important question to those who maybe have yet asked Jesus into their life. You may be concerned about someone today, maybe someone in your life, but the reality is this. If you're not in Christ Jesus, you better be concerned about yourself. The Bible teaches if one falls down, another one can pick him up. But if, God forbid, if uh, uh, someone falls down and there's no one to pick them up. Listen, you can only help someone when you're in a better place for them. Uh, 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 you're in a better place than them. Going back to the story when my boys were being dragged down, we were able to help them because we were stronger than them. Jesus, the Bible says, is the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but through him. You can't help anyone unless you have the strength of the Lord. It's only through a relationship with Jesus Christ where you can help yourself and others over, over, overcome challenges. You may not even recognize today that you're being dragged down. The Bible tells us that the devil is the steals, kills, and destroys. And he does it in a very subtle way sometimes. But I want to challenge you. You can stop that by asking Jesus Christ to come into your life. And when you do, it will give you that abundant life that Jesus talks about. Not only that, but it will break the power of sin and death off your life. I'm going to ask Pastor Matt to come and, and share with you about this abundant life for just a few moments and, and how to break the power of sin and death off your life. And then what we'll, and then after that, we'll come back together and we'll partake in communion. Pastor Matt, why don't you come? Thank you, Pastor Derek, for such a powerful message. Church, God's word tells us in Ephesians chapter two that we are dead in our transgressions and our sins. This is a completely hopeless situation unless, unless you have a savior, someone who can do the impossible and nothing is impossible for Jesus. But Jesus can't even save you unless you're able to lay aside your pride and acknowledge your need for him. Being in a spiritually dead state because of our sin is hopeless and helpless, but it doesn't have to be. Jesus came to give us life and life abundant. If you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, we want to give you that opportunity this morning. He's here. He's willing. He wants to save you because he knows you can't save yourself. So if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, today's your day. All you have to do is call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of Jesus for salvation. We're gonna walk you through a salvation prayer right now. So if that's you and you want to receive the salvation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 
Pray this prayer with me. Father God, I acknowledge my need for a savior. I am a sinner. I am dead in my trespasses and my sins and I desperately need you to rescue me. I give you my life. I will follow you. I will worship you. I will serve you because you are worthy. I believe you did enough for me to set me free from my sin, to set me free from slavery and captivity to that sin. And I receive your freedom and your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church. Pastor Derek, back to you. Well, welcome back, church. Uh, we're gonna partake in communion in just a moment. But um, before we do, why don't we go to the Lord in prayer and just thank him for these elements and what they represent. Father, we thank you for such a great day, uh, an opportunity that we can share in your sacrifice. And um, we thank you for all that you've done. Yes. And Lord, right now we just, um, we pray over ourselves. We, we ask that your grace, your forgiveness would uh, be applied to any area and every area that needs your grace and forgiveness yes. so that we'll, we're worthy of taking your communion. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Yes. And we yes. ask you to forgive us of all sin. Yes. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Amen. All right. Well, if we can take the wafer. Honey, I'll give this to you. Um, You're quite the you can grab, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if you can grab your cracker and, and uh, just uh, reflect on the broken body of Jesus Christ. And this is the power. You know, we talked today about his ability to come into your situation and transition you from being dragged down to being dragged yes. or to being brought up yes. to where you need to be and it's because of the broken body That's right. of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for mm -hmm. us. So let's just thank him together. Father, once again thank we you thank, so you much, thank you for this um, this symbol of your broken body and what you did on the cross mm -hmm. for us. We, we apply it to our lives and we thank you for it in mm -hmm. Jesus name. And everyone said amen. amen. All right, let's partake together. Here's your cup, hon. Thank you. This cup, you'll grab your cup, represents the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us it never loses its power. Amen. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. forever. Whatever you're going through, whatever situation you're in, yeah. the blood has the power to change it. Yes. And all we have to do is just invoke the name of Jesus. Jesus, yeah. I ask you to come in and save me and forgive yeah. me and heal me and deliver me. And he will because he has a power through yeah. his blood. So let's thank the Lord for this cup together. You, Lord. Lord, we thank you once again for dying on the cross for our sins and for our deliverance and for our uh, for an abundant life. Yes. And Lord, we thank you today that your power is the same yesterday, today, right. and forever. Yeah. We give you praise yes. for this thank cup you, in Jesus' name. Yes. And everyone said amen. Amen. All right, let's, amen. let's partake. Mm, good. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Ooh. All right. It's good. So, hey, we want to say thank you for joining us today. Yeah. And we have a couple uh, announcements we would like to make. Mm -hmm. um, some changes in our services. So yeah. next week, say next Sunday. Next Sunday. We are going to have our service live, live stream. Yay. So you can still watch it at home yeah. or wherever you're at. But it will be live, and it will be at 10 a.m. So we want as many of you to join on. Obviously, if join. You join. <laughs> join on. So if you can't join on, yeah. then later you can watch it. But but it would be great for everyone to try to get on at, at 10 a.m. Yeah, all at the same time. And it's Mother's Day. And tell us what's happening, honey, this Mother's Day. Yeah. Was, this next Mother's Day. Jan Anderson, Pastor Jan Anderson from Tucson, Arizona will be sharing a special message for all of us. 
for whether right. you're a man, whether you're a woman, um, it is for the whole family. And um, but it's it's very special for us because we love her so much, and she has poured into our lives and blessed us with her life. And we want to just you guys to have a piece of it as well. And and um, she is such a woman of worth, a proverb 31 woman. You're going to be so touched and blessed by her. She has such an anointing on yeah. her life yeah. for prophetic, for yeah. teaching the word of God. Yeah, and just a little context. Yeah. They were our pastors. Oh yeah, that's so right. So they, yes. they, they, they were kind of our fathers uh, and mothers in the faith. So yeah. anyways, we're excited to have her. Yeah. It's gonna be a powerful service. Uh -huh. Then starting May 17th, going all the way to the end of the month, the 17th, the 24th and the 31st, yeah. we are going to have church in our parking lot. We are gonna have a drive-in church. We're yeah. still gonna honor the, 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 the six feet rule. We're still gonna honor all the social distancing, mm -hmm. but we have acquired an FM station yeah. that when you come to church, you'll be able to be parked in our parking lot. Uh -huh. We're gonna have a designated area and you turn on your radio to, we'll let you know what station it is when you come in. <laughs> it's and, FM. And yeah, and then, <laughs> and then uh, you can watch the worship uh, from the patio and the preaching from the patio live. So it's gonna be a yeah. great time. We're looking yeah. forward to it. But they'll be in their cars. That's right. They'll yeah. be in their cars. Yeah. You'll stay in your car. We'll be on the patio. That's right. And if you need prayer, we're going to have our altar team. If you need prayer, yeah. uh, all you will have to do at the end of service is turn on your blinker and they'll come uh, to your car and six feet away and pray for yeah. you as you roll down your window. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Yes. We're looking so forward to it. Listen, if, if, that, if you don't feel comfortable, coming for the drive-in. You can obviously watch our services uh, live stream. They'll still be live stream yeah. uh, for that Sunday as well as, well as the rest of the month of May. So it's listen, good. get ready for it. We're gonna have a great time together. It's so good seeing you again. Yeah. If not in person, just I know you're out there. Yes. We love you. Have an amazing Sunday. Yes, bye. bye. God bless you.